capacity crowds at the Copper Box Arena in London witnessed two thrilling netball matches at the weekend, as world number three ranked England edged fourth ranked Jamaica in a three test series. After losing 73 52 in Wednesday's opener in Manchester, the Sunshine Girls rebounded with a 61 58 victory to level the series in London on Saturday. However, the Connie Francis coach side could not finish off the Roses and fell just short as England clinched the series with a 63-59 triumph on Sunday. Here's Ricardo Chambers with a look back at the key moments from the encounter. And it's the first centre pass to Jamaica. Nicole Dixon Rochester being managed, rotated that mid court with the injuries that Connie Francis has. I've already but penned up from the opening match of the series. Experienced Jamaican centre Nicole Dixon Rochester only lasted one centre pass in Sunday's decider. The 27 year old coming off injured after just 24 seconds and played no further part in the match. England was the better team in the first quarter, opening up a four goal advantage. Captain Janine Fonda thought she had cut the deficit to three with the final shot of the quarter, but the umpires ruled otherwise. Janelle not impressed with that. In order to score, the ball has to have passed the actual ring. Second quarter, and like they did in Saturday's second game, the Jamaicans stepped it up a notch. Janelle Fonda leveling at 27, but in a shocking development, the A shooter and a captain then subbed herself off. Fonda later telling reporters she felt nauseous. Her replacement, 24-year-old Shimona Nelson, held her ground, having to play the remainder of the second. Jamaica led 31 to 30 at halftime. She also played the full third quarter but there was more trouble for Jamaica wing defense Crystal Plummer suspended for continuous obstruction her removal coming with 43 seconds to go in the third that's an intentional obstruction that's a suspension for two minutes and this is what we talked about so she already had a warning and the umpire there suggesting that she intentionally obstructed so now she's going to be stood down for two minutes. She's going to the side of the court. And Jamaica will play with six players. Not the position they want to be in when they're down by three. England extending to a four-goal, 48-44 advantage at the end of that quarter. Fonda returned for the final quarter, but the Sunshine Girls couldn't close the gap. The teams scoring 15 apiece as the England Roses held on for a 63-59 victory and a 2-1 series win. Which the fans here at the Copper Box will count back. It's going to be England with a big victory here, a smile from Janelle Fowler. One of the best players in the world has played her part for Jamaica. But the England fans go wild because the England Roses have defeated Jamaica by two games to one. We're now joined by netball analyst Kurt Dale. Kurt is the captain of Jamaica's national men's team. Good afternoon, Kurt. Hey, good afternoon. How are you guys doing? We're all fine on this side. Kurt, my first question to you, though, it's can you give me an overall assessment of what you saw from the Jamaica Sunshine Girls looking back now that the series is over? over my overall assessment, I would, I'm quite pleased with where they are at, at this point. I mean, I, I thought at the first game, the 70, 70 to 50 scoreline was not true reflection of that game because Jamaica led for more than a half of that game and the 24-5 the um, last quarter was disappointed but um, yeah overall the girls really represented themselves well they came back um, they made some adjustments and they came back for the second game and they won that game um, quite convincingly even though it was just a four, four goal march at the end I think they really really stood their own and then the third game even though they lost i was like i was again impressed with them we didn't have rochester for any of that game and some of the rookies that i was very critical about they really stood up crystal unfortunately what happened to her but you know experience, experience gives knowledge and i'm sure she'll be better from that yeah so please right and as a netball player yourself areas in the game that you felt as if you know the ladies could have tightened up Game, in game three in particular, I think there were just key moments when they were a bit careless with the decision making. Um, they came up with a good good plan going into the third game. Based on what happened in game one versus game two, I think they, they watched the tape and they, they had a good strategy going in the, 
to game three and you could clearly see it. The, the plan was obviously to be as direct as possible going into Janil as early, early as possible once they're that one and one So that was clear in attack. Um, in defense, I thought there were moments when we were stagnant and we weren't as um, forceful as we needed, into, needed to be to force turnovers. But um, that's it. Connections are still developing. And, but overall, I think they really, did, they really did a good job. Yeah, and speaking about Janelle, she summed herself off. Of course, she explained afterwards that she was feeling nauseous. Talk to me about how the ladies played. And did you notice a gap from when she was off versus when she was on? Yes, I mean, Janelle gives the team confidence. She is the captain. But however, when she came off, they were still leading. Shimona Nelson came in and she was a super sub. She came in and she shot 20 from 20. Really impressive um, young stuff, looking forward to seeing more of her. I don't think it impacted the game a lot. Um, as I said, she was almost flawless. Kurt, the English women celebrated the victory as if it was so important as to give them a psychological boost going forward. Over the th course of the three games, did the Jamaicans play badly enough or the fact that they lost the series it, is that cause for psychological damage on the part of the Sunshine Girls? Well, the, based on what I saw from the series, a, a psycho, they'll need more than a psychological boost to Ingrid Roses. Uh, um, a depleted Sunshine Girls squad, a number of rookies, and they gave them the challenge that they did. If The Roses were basically at full strength. The only person who was missing from their, their full strength team is Eleanor Cardwell, who is their starting goal shooter. But Joe Harton played in that first game, and she's an ill replacement. And Olivia Tichney, who played in that goal shooter role, she was flawless. She was a target for them. She was shooting very accurately. So they were missing a goal shooter. That, that's not where their challenges were. So for me, I'd be concerned as an England Rose. As for Jamaica, I don't think it will affect them because they'll know that they have players to come in. And players of the quality of Shamira Sterling, uh, Latanya Wilson, a fully fit Rochester, they'll know that the difference that those persons, those players will make coming in is more than a poor goal. So I don't think they'll be worried. They'll be feeling really good about themselves. Of course, Plummer are recognized for the quality that she showed over the course of the three games, notwithstanding what happened in that third test. But it's on that point I want to take you up now because the Plummer, the decision to stand her down for two minutes. Um, I mean, people will say when the letter of the law was applied. Do you think it was a, a harsh call? Was it overly officious from the officials to uh, sit her down for that time? All right. It's, I think there are two ways to look at this. Because um, when you rewatch the game, almost every time the whistle was blown in that defensive end and you look, it, it was always Crystal being out of play. I mean, some of the contests were... I, I, they were clean contests. They were good attempts. They were attempts to get the balls. I, I, you would probably want to say mm, it wasn't deemed a caution, and especially the one that she got the first caution. I, I, I don't know if you guys could find that thing, but the one that she got the first, first caution, it was actually, in my opinion, it was a clean intercept. I don't know what the umpire saw. What, the umpire is at a different angle from me, so I'll give him that. But, um, yeah, I think it was a bit harsh, but the rules are there, and she was being pulled up for a lot of contacts and obstruction, so... You could see it coming. Yeah. Usually when you have a group dynamic, Kurt, and you're going into a major competition such as a World Cup, you want to have the team together and playing as many games as possible to have that chemistry going. What we're sure of is that the, fir the, the, the first choice Jamaican selection have that familiarity among them. But given that we are so far out from the World Cup, this is our last big test before the World Cup. And now England go mm -hmm. immediately into a situation where they're playing Australia, New Zealand, and South Africa in a quad series in South Africa. What does that say about the relative preparation of both these teams heading into that championship in Cape Town? Well, they'll be in a better position, um, might I add, because they'll be playing against top contenders for that World Cup title. So that will be beneficial to them, no doubt. Unfortunately, we won't be able to play in a similar setup but it was the same thing last year. Last year, we went to the Commonwealth Games and we got a silver medal. It was the same thing. It was the girls over in Australia getting the training there, staying physically prepared. And the girls were here playing regular practice match against the males 
we were there every week drilling them out. The males give them that fierce, tough competition that they need. So it's not against Australia or New Zealand, but what, what we, the males, try to do is try to, as close as possible, and mimic the game style of Australia, New Zealand, and England, and try to put that out against them to prepare them. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it, it's not the same as what the England, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa will be getting, but I, th I think they will be fine. Yeah. With your analyst's eye, of course, that's the eye you've been talking with, you, you've been looking and, and talking mm -hmm. with since, since the start of this interview. But if you're Connie Francis and her coaching staff, what is it that you found out about the team and these girls, this selection uh, for the three games in England uh, that would guide what we do for that World Cup? All right, so something I found out, and I think it would be something very key that Connie would be looking to, is that I think the girls use that first game as almost like a practice match because out of that first game, that last half of that first game, they would have identified the structures of the England Roses, what worked for the Jamaican team and what didn't. And they went, they went home and they did their homework and then they came back firing in that second game. And even in the third game, even though they lost, as I said, it was a really good performance, they were firing. So they obviously learned a lot from that first game. But what I want from them now is how can we, the question I'll be asking is how can they learn how to identify those structures of the opposition, what's working for them during the game so they can make the adjustment there and not allow a 24-5 blow out. Because at the end of the day, if, that's in a, if that was a semi-final, you'll be out. So yeah. just identify the structures and what works and try to implement it during the game and not after. Not yeah, after. make adjustments quicker. Kurt, we're out of time, but I have to ask you, is there any regular, is there any regular that should be saying, hmm, maybe my place is not so secure after all, given what that player did in my position in those three England games? No, no, I don't think so. I think the regulars are, are still a uh, uh, cream above the crop. So I, I don't think the regulars should be worried. They should be putting in the work because the youngsters are knocking on the door. But I think for now, the youngsters are safe. Here, here you the that, regulars are safe, sorry. The regulars are, yeah, I, I got that. that. That's what you meant. The, the regulars, regulars are, are safe. safe. <laughs> but but, but, the, but the, 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 the alternates aren't too shabby, is what you're saying as well. No, no, and if you can't, I know we're running out of time, but if you can think about it. So when Crystal got the, the warning and she was sent off, actually when the umpire tried to caution her, it was the wing attack from England who was sent to the umpire. She's already on a caution. She should be warned and sent off. No. And then when she was sent off, they were they were clapping. So you, that just that tells a story. She was really applying pressure onto them. So the future is bright for our youngsters. And I was critical about them, as I said, but I'm really impressed with how they finished off the season. Excellent the stuff, series. man. Thank you very much. All the best to you. We'll talk again. Thank you, guys. Good, good, good. Yeah, so Mariah, three tests done, uh, experimental. Connie Francis would have learned a lot along with the rest of the coaching staff. And as I said last Friday, I, there was nothing for me to worry about. And after the manner of the Sunday um, defeat, I still am not worried. Yeah, I'm not worried. But now that we mentioned the fact that, you know, England are going up now against some big opponents. I mm. wish our Sunshine Girls yeah. had a couple top international teams to play as they get ready for the World Cup. But I hope that, you know, he just said, Kurt just said that they push the girls. So I hope that, you know, the girls just get that practice in because we want to keep them hot and ready for the World Cup. Yes, indeed. All right, let's take a break. Break time. Stay with Sportsmax on YouTube and follow us on all social pages for updates, news and entertainment. <laughs>